Okay, Shalom Aleichem. I'm going to learn today Simon Pei Tess in Yeridea. We're, we're not going to do Mamish every single point, uh, you know, from the Simon in order. I want to focus in the time that we have, in the time slot that we have, I want to give over a certain Indian that the Olim could appreciate. So I'm gonna, we're going to go through, for the most part, the first three Sifim, but again, I'm not going to be... We're not going to be elucidating every single, every single din that's brought down. It's going to, from Sif Aleph and Beis, it's going to be more the Klolistic Inyan. And I want to go into more in depth in Sif Gimel, where it speaks about the din of a Tafshel Shalbasa, what the requirements are if somebody doesn't eat mamish, the meat itself, but he only eats a Fleshiga dish, something that was cooked together with meat that has Fleshiga taste. What are the requirements over there? So this simon in general speaks about the separations that one has to do between milk and meat. If a person eats meat first and then afterwards milk, and if a person eats milk first and afterwards meat. And then afterwards we discuss also the din of a tafshil, that you don't eat the meat itself, you just eat a tafshil. You eat a dish, a fleshig a dish, eat a potato from the challenge, something which is fleshigs but not the meat itself. Or a person eats a tafshil shogvina, let's say uh, something was cooked with, uh, let's say you have a pizza, you take off the cheese and you only eat the, the crust with the sauce. That's clearly milchigs, but you're not eating the cheese itself. So that's really what I want to get into. Um, but let's start from the beginning. So the Gemara, when it speaks about the separations between milchigs and fleshigs, there's a few things that are mentioned, and it's not clear, it's a machlekes in the Rishonim, uh, what exactly each one's referring to. But the Gemara speaks about the idea that you have to separate by doing kinuach and hadacha. Kinuach means eating something to wipe out your mouth. Hadacha means drinking something and swishing it around in your mouth to rinse out your mouth. It's a way of cleaning your mouth. And also in the you die and washing your hands to make sure that there's no dirt on your hands. There's a way of separating so you don't end up mixing between the milchings and the fleshings. It also speaks about a certain, a certain waiting period. It says that uh, the war, the war people waited, they didn't eat it even in the same day. But it's clear from the Gemara that that's, that's like a Midas Chasidus. I believe that Rizal used to also, it's brought down from that Rizal that he also followed this. He used to wait 24 hours. He didn't eat it in the same day. That's Amidas Chasidus. But there is something that's also mentioned to wait, uh, or it's not necessarily waiting. We'll soon see what it means. Misuda Lasuda, from meal to meal. So that's another thing that it speaks about. Um, there's also some cryptic statement that Oifugvino Necholim Bapikoiren that chicken and cheese could be eaten in a way of hefker. Okay. And the Gemara teaches that that means, what does it mean in a hefker way? That you don't have to do kinuach and adach and etil. You don't have to wash out your mouth and, and uh, clean out your mouth. Which, and, and the deal here is, the implication is, that between chicken and cheese is not a requirement, but with the meat, between basar and cheese, there is such a requirement. So do we have these, these, different, these different requirements? You have to see which one each one is referring to. So we'll soon see as we get to it, the Machaber and the Ramah, they follow two different Mahalchim in how to interpret the Gemara. So the Machaber follows one Mahalach in the Rishonim. This is the stricter way to understand. That when the Gemara speaks about doing kinuach and hadacha, just eating something in between, you know, drinking something, washing your hands, this is what's the requirement between milchigs and fleshigs. If the person eats milchigs first and he wants to eat fleshigs afterwards. So that's, there's no waiting period, Medina de Gemara. Um, it's allowed to be eaten in the same Suda. In fact, it speaks about in, in the halachas of a suda and in, in arachayim, the, you know, what's the, what's the way to do it? In other words, if you have a milchig, of course, first, the cheese blintzes, 
coming up shoeless, right? And the cheese glimpses, you want to have flesh afterwards, a second course. Medina the Gemara, with Aler Piyurim and the Rishonim, it's allowed to be in the same Suda. You could have two courses in the same meal. First a Milchiga course, and a flesh course, and you have to do something in between. What is this in between? That's where it speaks about you have to wash your hands. That's called Mayim and Soyim. So you have three ways of washing your hands. There's Mayim Rishonim, that's until you're dying before bread. There's Mayim Achroinim, that's before you bench to clean your hands. And then there's Mayim Mimtsoyim, just in between the, the Milchiga course and the Fleshiga course. And, but it could be the same meal, and there's no waiting period, no requirement to bench. Fine. But if you go the other direction, and on this is where it says, on this is where it says, what does that mean? That from milchigs to fleshigs, you never need. Uh, I'm sorry, from, from milchigs, this is, the, this is, this is the, uh, the stricter, we're in the stricter mahalach now, that from milchigs to fleshigs, this you have to do the they have to do kinuach, uh, you, know, uh, you know, this thing. And, but if it's between cheese and chicken, so then you're not lucky to do this. You don't have to do kinuach and adacha. So where did it say that, that chicken and cheese could be eaten in a way of hefker without doing kinuach and adacha? That's if you eat the milk of course first, if you eat the cheese first, and afterwards you want to eat the flesh eggs. So if it's chicken, then it's happy koiren, you don't need to do kinuach and adacha. But if it's meat, then you're required to do kinuach and adacha. But it could still be in the same meal, etc. Mashenk, and if you do it the other way around, if, it's a fle- if you eat flesh eggs first, so that's where it says it has to be misuda lasuda. And another lush in the Gemara is if a person eats meat, achol basar asr lechol gvina. Here it's ready in iser. It has to be from meal to meal. What does it mean from meal to meal? According to this interpretation, it's a shear, it's a hamtana. It's a waiting period that's required. And meal to meal means, according to this pirush, from the morning meal to the evening meal. In the olden days, they used to have two meals a day. One in the morning after the evening, and then one in the evening after a day's work, once it started to get dark, they couldn't work anymore, they would come home, ski a time, they would eat. So it was the morning meal and the evening meal. So Tamir HaChacham used to learn a little bit before the morning meal. The morning meal was from 11 to 12. And then the evening meal was ski a time at 6 o'clock. So it was a six hour period between the morning meal and the evening meal. And that's what it means, the suda lasuda from meal to meal. is a waiting period from a six hour waiting period. And certainly not allowed to be part of the same meal. It's even if somehow you're having this long fabringen and it's, it's one meal, uh, obviously it can't be in the same meal. It has to be a different suda. You have to bench, it has to be part of a different meal. But even that's not enough. It has to be that there's a six hour period from when you finished eating the fleshings till when you want to begin to, to, to when you want to begin eating the milchings. That's the smahal. That's the machaber. That's how the machaber paskins. So between meat and milk, meaning meat first and milk afterwards, there's a six-hour waiting period, and it cannot be part of the same meal. And going in this direction, if you eat the meat first, then there's no difference between meat and chicken. Mm-hmm. Whether you eat meat, whether you eat chicken, there's a six hour waiting period. The only time we differentiate is in the other direction. If you eat cheese first, between cheese and meat, that could be in the same meal. But over here there's a difference that between cheese and chicken, you don't have to do quinoa hanadacha. Between cheese and meat, you do have to do quinoa hanadacha. That is, that is one mahalach. That's the, the mahalach of the machaber. That's how the machaber paskins. The approach of Toysvis is a much more uh, lenient way of interpreting the Gemara. That's when the Gemara said that you have to do kinua chanadacha, that whole requirement of cleaning out your mouth, that was said between meat first, between meat and cheese. That whole requires meat and cheese. And that's what it means when we say that if you eat meat, you're not allowed to eat cheese. It means you're not allowed to just stop eat the cheese right away. You have to do something, you have to do kinua chanadacha. And what does it mean from suda to suda from meal to meal? It just means it's not allowed to be part of the same suda. If you have milk sugar course first, and the flesh sugar course could be second, it could be in the same suda, right? Masha'enkein, if you do it the other way around, it's not allowed to be part of the same suda. It has to be a different suda. You have to have already benched, and then you could start a new meal. But the new meal could be 10 minutes later. If you decide you're hungry 10 minutes later, so you can eat the ice cream, even though you just finished the flesh sugar meal. 
There's no, there's no waiting period. There's no requirement of waiting, according to Taisus. Just washing out the mouth and making sure that it's a different suda. And of course, washing your hands, your mouth, and making sure it's a different suda. For milchigs to fleshigs, that you don't even have to do anything other than washing your hands, and that's it. So that's the lenient way, the Taisvis way of interpreting, and, and that's the Ramah Paskins like that, Me'ikar Adin, um, that that's the Ikar Halacha. But there's a little bit of a twist to it, we'll see inside, and then we'll see, of course, what is our Minhag. Let's first understand our Minhag we know after meat, after Fleshik, we wait six hours. What is this? Uh, even the Ramah Paskins, that mean Me'ikar Adin, there's no waiting period like Taisvis, but even the Ramah concludes that. The Yesh Medaktik in Laham Ten Sheisha. It's uh, definitely an encouraged uh, hidur that one should do. So, therefore, even in our cries, in uh, those, those that generally we follow the Ramah, we still, we still a mice await six hours. So, what's the six hours for? What to accomplish? Well, we, we said from the Gemara where, where the six hours comes from. That that's what it means, misuda lasuda, and that's what it means, aser lecha, according to this pirush. Aser lecha means that there, there's a shir hamtana, there's a waiting period. But what's accomplished by this waiting period? So this is a machlekes we show you how to understand what's accomplished from this waiting period. Rashi understands because by the meat it's a moishech tam. There's a residual taste in your throat when you swallow the meat. Uh, you know, sometimes I think it's like me. My impression is that it's like kind of, kind of where the heartburn is in this area. It's vayshech tam, and they have to wait till that goes away. It's six hours that goes away. We don't want it should mix. Midar abonin, of course, this requirement is midar I said it has to be cooked together, mamish for it to be considered masa b'chala. But we don't want even this residual taste. It should mix with with when you start to eat cheese afterwards. We don't even want. We want this this taste. The residual taste should be away. Six hours it goes away. The Rambam says a reason. When you eat meat, the meat gets stuck in between your teeth. And so what happens after six hours? You would ask me, I would say, meat gets stuck in your teeth. Floss, take it out. It doesn't make a difference if one minute passes, if six hours pass. If something is stuck there, it's stuck there. What's the pshat at six hours? So Ramam understands that this is what the Gemara is teaching us here, is that after six hours, the, the meat starts to digest to some extent. It's the first stage of the digestion. It starts to break down in your mouth from the saliva. The meat starts to digest, and, and at, after that, it's not called, after that, it's not called meat anymore. It doesn't have the shame basar, and therefore you don't have to worry about it anymore uh, if it mixes with the cheese when you start eating the cheese. Le- but less than six hours, we're worried about that. Ah, you'll say, okay, so just floss and get rid of it. So obviously the Ramah was chayshish that sometimes you floss, you don't get everything out. You try your best. Sometimes there's a stubborn thing there. It's hard to reach. It doesn't work so good. So we don't want to rely on flossing. The only thing you can do is wait it out until it's not considered meat anymore. But for, for Rashi's pirush, that the six hours is to get rid of the taste in your throat, we don't have any mucker to tell me that after six hours, this is not considered meat. As long as it's there, it's considered meat. Of course, when it goes into your stomach, it might not be considered meat anymore, but when it's still in your mouth, we have no makar, according to Rashi's uh, reason, we have no makar from the Gemara to tell us that after six hours, it's not considered meat anymore. Mashenkin, according to the Ramam's way, after six hours, that's the whole, that's the whole purpose of the six hours, that after the six hours, it's not considered uh, anymore, it's not considered to be meat. What are the nafkaminas between these two reasons? So it's, it's brought down in, in, in the Torah, in the Shulchan Aruch, the, the, the nafkaminas is the following. What happens if a person chews loyis latinic? He chews the meat, but he doesn't swallow. So here you have the reason of basar shabain hashinai, and you have the reason that the meat is going to get stuck in your teeth. But you don't have the reasons, you have, so it means you have the Rambam's reason, but you don't have Rashi's reason of moishach tam, because if you didn't swallow, there's no concern about any residual taste in your mouth. I guess that the, in your mouth itself, that I guess go away. It doesn't really last. Um, you rinse it out, obviously, but there's not going to be any, any residual taste that's going to last for six hours. So according to Ramam, you would have to wait to six hours. According to Rashi, in that case, you won't have to, only if you swallow. Oh. By contrast, 
What's the din if after waiting six hours, you find that there's still meat in your tea? Look the Rambam's reason. You could leave it there. You don't have to do anything. That was the whole reason you waited the six hours. Now that little piece of meat stuck in your teeth is not considered meat bichlau. So you can leave it there. That was the whole reason you waited the six hours. But Shaykhin Leit Rashi, we don't have such a... We were never taught that rule that after six hours it's not considered meat anymore. Presumably it is. So therefore, if it's there, you have to take it out. Now you wouldn't have to wait another six hours according to Rashi because you didn't swallow, right? Um, as long as you waited the six hours from when you swallowed it, that's the ichor. But you still have to take it out of your mouth. You feel something in your teeth, you have to floss it out according to Rashi. So even if you waited six hours, you'll still have to do that. So we have basically a chumrah from each reason. If you didn't swallow, according to Rashi, you don't have to wait. According to Ramam, you don't have to wait. And once you wait in the six hours, but there's still meat in your teeth, according to the Ramam, you don't have to do anything about it. And according to Rashi, you still have to get rid of it and wash out your mouth afterwards. So, the halacha, it's interesting, over here we pass in like both reasons. Because they're not mutually exclusive. There's, there could be truth to both of them. And therefore, we're choshish for both reasons, even though this whole thing is midr Nevertheless, we're still choshish for both reasons, and therefore, if a person chooses even without swallowing, he has to wait to six hours, for the Rambam's reason. And even if you waited the six hours, you find meat in your teeth, you'll still have to take it out to be choshish for Rashi. And that's Lamaisa, what's brought down in Shulchan Aruch. If a person doesn't chew and he doesn't swallow, so neither reason is applicable. Space. Let's say somebody is cooking Arab Shabbos, they just want to taste to see if there's enough salt in the food, and for that they could just lick it and then spit it out afterwards and, and rinse out their mouth. Then, l'chol adeis, you're not required to wait six hours. Allah l'may say, you're not required to place can bring down. There's no requirement to wait six, six hours in such a case because neither reason is applicable. You didn't chew, you didn't swallow. Okay, so let's have a look now at the Mechaber. We'll see how the, the you know, Mechaber brings this requirement of waiting six hours and the two reasons. And then we'll see inside the Ramah. He argues, he quotes the more lenient opinion. If you're following along with the booklet, it's page 30. Simon Peites. Not to eat cheese after meat. But it also discusses the other way around. Uh, meat after cheese. And also about a top show. Ochal basar, if a person eats meat, even if it's chicken, which we paskin is only made rabbanan, chicken and milk, the combination of chicken and milk is only made rabbanan, still, if you eat the fleshix first, meat or chicken, lo yoichal vina achrav, you're not allowed to eat cheese afterwards. According to this pirush, as we, met, as we noted, the difference that the Gemara makes between oif, between chicken and meat, is in the other direction. If you eat the cheese first and you want to eat the meat afterwards, then there's a dis- the difference between meat after cheese versus chicken after cheese. Where chicken, we're more lenient. You don't have to do kinua chanadacha, but by meat, we're strict. As, as that halach is going to be quoted later on. But going in this direction, from meat first, there's no distinction between behema or oif, between meat and chicken. Is lo yoichod bina achri, you're not allowed to eat cheese or milk afterwards. At sheyasha sheisha, until you wait six hours. What's the six hours? As we mentioned before from the Gemara, this is misuda lasuda, this is the morning meal to the night meal. Vafilo, and the six hours is calculated from the end of the eating of the meat to the beginning of the eating of the cheese. Now it doesn't really matter when you benched um, or when you started eating, it has to go from the end of the eating of the meat. If you eat dessert afterwards, it's from the, when you finish the meat. Even if you did wait the six hours, if you find meat in your teeth, you still have to get rid of it. This is to be concerned for Rashi that the reason for the six hours is to get rid of the taste. But the piece in your mouth, the piece in your mouth is still a problem after six hours. So it has to be removed. And as the shach brings down, you also have to wash out your mouth afterwards. The aloy is Latinic. Conversely, if a person just chews and he doesn't swallow, so then you have the reason of the Rambam. You don't have the reason of Rashi, right? Then you only have the reason that the meat... Uh, I'm sorry, you have the reason of... of, of uh, if a person chews and he doesn't swallow, so you only have the reason of the Rambam, that the meat is stuck in your teeth. And therefore it's our lamp, and you have to wait. So in other words, we're strict for both reasons. If a person finds meat, like we quoted before, if you have meat in your teeth after six hours, you have to remove it. So the Ramah points out, 
you can't just remove it, that's not enough. So you have to rinse out your mouth before you eat the cheese. And, and really the Shach explains it's not just doing, he mentions one of them, but you have to do both. You have to do kinuach and hadach. You have to wipe out your mouth and wash out your mouth. So that is the opinion of the Machabra. Now the Ramah quotes the lenient opinion of Toysvis. The Eid Srinchim Lamptin Sheisha is you don't have to wait six hours. Suda la Suda means benching, has to be a different meal. If you finished your meal and you bench berachas hamazin, that's if you washed. If you didn't wash, you just had cheese, uh, you made a bar and a fascist. I'm sorry, we're talking about meat first. You just had a piece of chicken, so you make a bar and a fascist. You're allowed to eat cheese by doing kinua chenadacha. Because according to him, the kinua chenadacha was said in this case between the meat first and the cheese afterwards. This is quoting an opinion. He quotes Toysus. But he says, what's the custom? What's the minhag? To wait after meat one hour. So not six hours, one hour. And afterwards you can eat the glina. But you still have to bench. And the truth of the matter is, even the Mechaber doesn't mention it, it goes without saying it. Misuda l'suda, a different suda, according to all interpretations, means that it has to be a different meal, it means you have to bench. Question is, is it also hinting to an idea that you have to wait a waiting period? According to the Mechaber, it means a waiting period. According to Ramah, it does not mean a waiting period. The Oz have a suda cheres, because it has to be at least a different meal in the sense that you benched. That you're allowed to eat. In other words, what he's pointing out is that even though we're saying that you wait an hour, okay, you still have to, you still have to bench. But the truth of the matter is that even if you wait six hours, according to the Mahabra, you still have to bench. But without benching, it doesn't help to wait one hour. It doesn't matter if the six hours was before benching or after benching, or if the one hour was before benching or after benching. And the truth of the matter is, as we mentioned before, when we're talking about the six hours, it's the same rule. Usually six hours after eating, you can't bench anymore. But if the meal was extending for whatever reason, you were constantly eating, then again, the six hours is from the end of the meat. And just like over here, he's saying that the one hour that the Ramah is introducing is in the end of it. And if you find meat after the hour, you'll obviously have to get rid of it. Then he says, when we, when we say that you have to bench rest a different meal, so a person could say, okay, I'll eat the meat, and when I finish eating the meat, I want to have ice cream, dessert. So I'll bench, I'll have ice cream. No, that's the same meal that I had him. So the, what Misuda Lasuda means is that it has, actually has to be a different meal. It's true that there's no waiting requirements that you must wait a certain amount of time, like the first interpretation, like the Mahabra says, but it does have to actually be really a different meal. And you can't bench almanas in order you should be able to eat your, your milchag ice cream. But then he brings down that the oilam is not nizer in, in this, but the Taz takes issue with this. He says, Lash Nagamar is silo kubir, have to mamish finish your meal. So that's an absolute requirement. Um, now, where does this one hour come from? So the one hour, the Pashtus, where this one hour comes from, the Beir Agra says, and this, I, I think it's generally assumed like that. There, there's, no, there's no shita in the Gemara that, that you know, let's say, Misudol Suda means an hour or something. There's no such a, there's no requirement like this in the Gemara. So where does, it, where does the minuk to wait an hour come from? So the, the, the Beir Agra writes that it's from the Zayar. The Zayar writes, Hai Michla, this food, Basa Bechalav, should not be eaten b'shaita chada, b'suda chada. Not allowed to, it's not allowed to be eaten in the same hour or in the same meal. So the same hour could be interpreted as literally an hour, like a clock hour. 
And that's why we're saying, even though in Medina de Gemara, in terms of the interpretation of what it means, Mesuda la Suda, according to this interpretation, it just means a different meal, it just means benching, there's no waiting period. But al Zayar, it's not supposed to be eaten in the same hour. And the minuk to wait is al Zayar. So now it's an interesting shaila, an interesting machloika shach and taz, that at first glance it doesn't look like, it doesn't look like it's negea for us. La halacha, because we anyway wait six hours. If you wait six hours, you for sure don't have to do kinua chanadacha. Because if you wait six, according to the according to the shita that you're waiting six hours, kinua chanadacha was said between milchigs and fleishigs, not between fleishigs and milchigs. Between fleishigs and milchigs, you're doing six hours, right? So you don't have to do kinua chanadacha. But according to the Rama, you, when you do misuda lasuda, when you're only when you're only benching, so kinua chanadacha is a requirement midina the gemara. So if Kinua Chanadach has a requirement to Medina the Gemara, and now you wait an hour, so now comes the Shaila, you still, are you still required to do Kinua Chanadach, even after waiting an hour. I know there was the Ramah started off saying, you just bench and do Kinua Chanadach. Then he said the minute gets to wait an hour. So the question is, now that we wait an hour, or according to the minute of the Ramah, to wait an hour, Apil Zoyar, yeah, does that take away from the basic requirement, which is to do kinuch and adach. So the Taz says, absolutely not. A chumrah cannot take away from a requirement to adin. If you have a requirement to make a adin to do kinuch and adach, so you want to be machmer to also wait an hour, is also wait an hour. But that can't take away from your base requirement, which is kinuch and adach. So you have to do kinuch and adach and wait an hour. But the Shach says, no. The Shach says that just like if you wait six hours, it takes away the need for doing kinuach and So, so too in this case, if you wait an hour, it takes away the need, the ikra din, what's required. Although when you do the zayar's hour, you don't have to do any more the gemara's kinuach and Right? Because this hour, it, it's not just an additional chumrah, but it also accomplishes what the kinuach and would need to accomplish. So, the Machloika Shach and Taz, in its original context, has no relevance for us because we all wait six hours. And if you wait six hours, you certainly do not have to do Kinoch and Adacha. But the Rebbe points out in a letter that the Machloika Shach and Taz does have relevance for us because we wait one hour between Milchigs and Fleishigs. Now, as we're about to learn, between Milchigs and Fleishigs, the halachic requirement is Kinoch and Adacha. Right? That's the halachic requirement between milchigs and fleishigs. But we wait an hour according to this zayar. Based on this zayar, we wait an hour for milchigs and fleishigs also. So now it becomes relevant. Our base requirement, if you eat cheese first and then you want to eat meat, our base requirement is kinuach and That's our requirement, al pi the gemara. But we wait an hour as a chumrah from the zayar. So according to the Taz, you still have to do Kinoa Hanadacha, but according to the Shach, you don't. And the implication here from the letter is that, we've, what we, that the custom is to follow the Shach, that when we wait an hour after Milchigs, we don't do Kinoa Hanadacha. So the, the hour seems to accomplish and take away the need for Kinoa Hanadacha. So now in Sif Beis, he moves on to Milchigs to Fleishigs, means we eat Milchigs first. So we, we, did a, we actually discussed the background for it, the Gemara for it. I actually want to skim through this quickly um, so that we can move on to a top show. So I'll read it quickly. There is more details to be discussed. And the truth is, even in Sif Aleph alone, there is some. I want to keep it kind of focused on this Indian. But this Sif, I'll, I'll glide through. Um, I'll skim through a little bit quicker. Achal Gavina, if you eat the cheese first, Mutalech Lachrod Basr Miyadus. L'chol is Medina de Gemara, no waiting period. Uh, and it's allowed to be in the same Suda. You have to see that your hands doesn't have any residue on it. If it's a night, you can't check them properly. You have to wash your hands. So there's a chiv netilas yadayin, l'chol hadeis, between milchigs and fleishigs. Milchigs first and fleishigs afterwards. You have to do kinuach and adacha, clean out your mouth. What is kinuach? Kinuach is sheyilo is pas v'yekanech by piv yafa, that you chew bread and you wipe out your mouth properly with it. Lechim b'chol davar sheyirts, you could use anything that doesn't have to be bread. Chutz mikim chotam rivyark, and besides for flour and dates and vegetables, lefishem nitbakim b'chanichaim, because it gets stuck on your on your in your gums. 
the Ein Mekan Chayaf, and it doesn't do a good job of wiping it out. Afterwards, you rinse out your mouth with water or with wine, and the Mepharshim say it doesn't have to be in this order. It could be any order you want. You, want, you, you, want, you could do Hadacha first, and then Kinuach, or you could do Kinuach first, and then Hadacha. Med, when does this apply that you have to do quinoa and between the cheese and the meat? That's between cheese and meat. The basar behem of a between cheese and meat. Avon in balachal basar oifachag mean, but if you want to eat chicken at chicken after cheese. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do this. That's api kairin. It could be eaten in a way of hefker, as we mentioned before. So this is the uh, this is the first opinion. The, the, then there's a ramah. It's a little bit difficult to understand every, the, each phrase in the ramah. It seems to be somewhat repetitive. There's discussions about it. I'm not going to go into it now. We'll just read it briefly. Uh, and say over a few relevant halachas. Some are machmir, even a bit, a bit, a meat after cheese. If it's hard cheese, so by hard cheese, the, um, you don't eat meat or chicken after hard cheese. It's the same thing. So if you wait six hours after meat, you wait six hours after cheese. You wait um, one hour, then you wait you wait one after one hour after meat, then you wait one hour, hour after hard cheese. The Asian Makilim, some are lenient. Now what is this about? Um, there is a source for waiting after cheese. It's brought in the Mardchai, a story with the Marami Rutenberg that one time. He was getting ready to eat meat. He had eaten cheese and he was getting ready to eat meat and, he, and there was some cheese in his teeth. And based on because of that, and Michshol, that almost happened to him, he basically made a achlata that he's not going to eat you know, meat right after cheese. He's gonna wait just like after meat. The pashtus is that that was only applicable, um, that was only applicable to too hard, to hard cheese, got stuck in his teeth. That was the, that was the reason that he was concerned with. Um, but soft cheese and milk and stuff like that, there was no issue. But hard cheese, that's the implication of the story. That's where the schumra comes from. But he, he said clearly that he's only machmir, um, he himself, when the maram, when the story happened, he said he's only gonna be machmir not to eat meat after hard cheese. But chicken, he wasn't, he, he wasn't machmir. But uh, the Beis Yosef says that, based on the Zayar, we should be machmer also um, also for oif afterwards. And that's what he brings down over here in the Ramah. Even oif were machmer. But again, there are those that are lenient when it comes to, to chicken. There are those that are lenient altogether. Marshal says, that there's no such a thing as making up your own gzeira after the times of the Gemara. If a person wants to make his own siog for himself, the Maram Rutenberg felt something happened to him, maybe it was some shamayim, whatever, okay, he's entitled to do that. But to say based on that story, now being goizer, making up a new halacha, you don't make up new halachas after the time of the Gemara. So there are those that are lenient even to eat meat after hard cheese. So there's different opinions about it. The Ramah concludes toiv lahachner. It's good to be machner. What exactly is this hard cheese that you have to wait six hours? This is a machloike shach and tas. The tas says that me'ikar adin, the only, because we said after meat, there's two reasons why you would have to wait six hours. One reason was getting stuck in your teeth, and one reason was me'ishach tam. So the tas says that's when it comes to meat. There's two, there's two possible reasons. When it comes to cheese, the only reason that's applicable is Moshech Tam, is if it has a strong taste. But if the cheese is just pieces in your teeth, then you don't have to worry about that. It's, it's only a din by meat, that, even, that the meat, if the meat is in your teeth, it's still it's a problem. There's a pasuk, if it's the meat was still in their teeth. So for meat that's in the teeth, 
That's a problem. You have to wait it out. You have to wait out to six hours till it's not considered meat anymore. But by cheese, we don't have this concern. By cheese, the only concern by cheese is if it's very strong cheese, and that could also be moishach tam, it could also leave taste in your throat, then uh, we're machmir. So what is this kind of cheese? This is cheese which is uh, made with the keva. It's made with the, you know, uh, the rennet from the stomach, real animal rennet, or it's metulas, it's wormy. This, this is the real six hour cheese. This is a real strong cheese that leaves a taste in your throat. If it's just aged for six months and therefore becomes kosher, becomes hard, that alone says the taz and ikar adin, there's no requirement to wait. The shach, on the other hand, brings down that both reasons apply to cheese, just like by meat. So not only if it's mitulas, not only if it's wormy and, and it has a strong flavor, but even if it's aged for six months, the common cheeses that are aged for six months practically is uh, the Swiss cheese. It could only be called Swiss, Swiss cheese if it's aged for six months. And uh, Parmesan cheese also has to be aged for six months. There are other cheeses, but these are the very common ones. But the regular cheeses that we have are not aged for six months. The cheddar, the mozzarella, the, uh, the American, all these cheeses, they're a little bit hard, obviously, but they're not aged for six months. They're aged for a couple of months. They're not six-hour cheeses, according to most opinions. So that's what you have over here as far as, and, and that's, of course, our minog, is to follow the shach, the stricter, the stricter uh, shita, that even aged for six months, you have to wait, you have to wait six hours. There is a commonly known uh, leniency, both from the Yad Yehuda, that if the cheese is melted into the food, you don't have to wait six hours. We're not machmas. Even if it's hard cheese, let's say it's aged for six months, but if it's melted into the food, you don't have to wait six hours. And, uh, to my understanding, there's a little bit of a, um, this, this rule is kind of applied incorrectly. If you look in the context of what he was trying to say, He's saying that if the cheese is no longer banned, if it's no longer um, visible, if it's dissolved, and it's only basically taste, then we're not machmir about waiting the six hours. If it's only a tafshul, if it's only the taste of the cheese, we're not machmir. Um, but by the meat, but, 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 but if it's melted, if it's just melted, if, let's, let's say it's melted onto something, if the Parmesan cheese is melted onto the lasagna, you can still see it, it's on it. Uh, he was, wasn't talking about it. Now I'm, I'm agreeing that in terms of logically speaking, there's, there's some room to be lenient. You're saying it's not hard anymore, it's, it's softer, it's melted. But um, I don't know if there's a source for that. The source, which is commonly quoted, is, is the Yad Yudah. But if you look at it inside, that's what he's referring to. He's not talking about melted on. He's talking about melted into. Let's say you melt the Parmesan cheese into the sauce. Then it's in the sauce as part of it. So then he says, we're not mach, we're about the six hours for that in that, in that kind of case. That's just Stama Ha'ara I wanted to share. It's a common... I don't know if it's, you can call it a misconception to some extent. I'm not saying it's totally wrong, but it's definitely a misconception in the sense of where, where this rule is quoted from. Now, let's move on to what, what I really wanted to get to, uh, but we needed some of this background, and that's a tafshel shel basar. Tafshel shel basar means a fleishig dish, something which is undoubtedly fleishigs. It is, it's, uh, you know, it has flesh and a taste, it's not bottle bashishim. It was cooked with meat. Let's say potatoes was cooked, you have a chalant. You take out a potato, potato was cooked with meat. You take out a potato, there's no actual pieces of meat on the potato, or even fats from the meat on the potato. This taste is absorbed. There's, there was no shishim in the chalant. There's clearly a flesh and a taste. And this potato is 100% flesh eggs. If it would be warmed up in a milk egg bowl, you would have to kasher the bowl. If you would mix it with cheese, the whole thing would become basar b'cholov and everything would have to be discarded. There's no debate that this potato is 100% flesh eggs. Question here is, eating this potato, does it require, do you have to wait six hours after eating this potato? That's what it means, a tafshel shel basar. What is the requirement? Do you have to wait six hours? Do you have to wash your hands? What is the requirement? So it says something in the Gemara, and then of course we have a machlaik svishayinim, how to interpret it. 
It says in the Gemara, Bein tafshel tafshel rishus, Bein tafshel ligvino choivo. Taich. Bein between a dish, one dish and another dish, which means you're not eating the actual meat, but you're eating just a fleshige dish, a potato from the chalant. Bein tafshel le tafshel rishus, it's uh, how do you say it? it's not mandatory? You, it's, it's a rishus to wash your hands. You don't must wash your hands. You don't must do natila sidaim. You don't must do mainim tzayim. Between these two courses, you don't must wash your hands. Between tapshul and vino, between a tapshul shel baser, between this potato from the chalant and cheese itself, then Then it's a requirement to do natila sidaim. You must wash your hands. That's what it says in the Gemara. What does that mean? So we have two interpretations. You have the Rashbam and Rabbi Nutan. Rabbi Nutan says that, and this is the opinion that's quoted by the Machaber Lahalacha and by the Tur, that what does it mean, mean Tafshil a Tafshil? It means between a Tafshil Shal Basar and Tafshil Shal Gvina. So if you eat a potato from the Chalant, and now you want to eat the pizza without the cheese. You just want to, you took off the cheese and you're just eating the tafshil shalvina. You're just eating the milchige dish, the thing that has milchige taste absorbed inside of it. 100% milchige, but you're not eating the actual cheese, the ba'en. You're just eating the cheese flavored food. So between these two dishes, rishos, you don't must wash the tilos yadayim. You don't must wash the tilos yadayim. It's, if you want to, you could. However, between a tafshel shel basar and gvina, if you want to eat the cheese itself, so let's say you eat a potato from the chalant and now you want to eat the pizza with the cheese, now Now it's a requirement to do natila sedaim. Now you must wash your hands. That is how the Rabbeinu Tam interprets this Gemara. So we have over here like this. If a person eats a potato from the chalant and he wants to eat pizza, he has to wash his hands. Anything about waiting six hours? Nope. It says Rabbi Natam, not only that, even according to those that hold, that after meat, you have to wait six hours, that's only after meat itself. But you talk in Pirush Zeh, this, that you don't, that you, that you just have to wash your hands, right, between, between the potato from the chalant and pizza, you have to wash your hands. And between potato from the chalant and crust to the pizza, you don't even have to wash your hands. This is even according to the Manda Omar. Even according to those that hold that after chi, after meat, you have to wait six hours. But between after potato from the chalant, you don't. And this is how the Mechaber Paskins. And even though the Mechaber Paskins are pi halacha, you're, you're required to wait six hours after meat. According to the Ramah, the six hours after meat is only a chumrah. I'm a doctor, Those that are scrupulous, yeah, the Hamidas Chasidus to wait six hours, according to the Ramah, right? But according to the Mechaber, it's an absolute requirement to wait six hours. But even according to the, according to the Mechaber, that's a requirement to wait six hours. That's after the meat itself. Because the meat itself, as we mentioned, there's these two reasons. There's the basar shabain hashinayin, the meat gets stuck in your teeth, and there's the moishach tam, there's the taste that that's the lingers in your throat. But if you only eat a tafshil shel basar, if you only eat a potato from the chalant, neither of these two reasons are applicable. You don't have meat stuck in your teeth, and even the, the meat flavor, it's not so strong in your throat because you, you didn't eat plain meat, you ate a potato. The potato had meat flavor in it, but you're not going to have such a strong moishach tam of meat flavor by eating this potato. Tachmavor b'rishayinim, an explanation of this sheet. So therefore, there's no requirement to wait six hours for sure, not. And as far as the tilas so if you're eating the pizza gufo with the cheese, so then you have to wash your hands in between. If you're just eating the crust of the pizza, so then you don't have to wash your hands. If you want, between these two courses, if you want, you could wash your hands, but you don't have to. That is, that is what it says over here. That's the machaber shita. We can read it inside now, page 34. Sif Gimel. Achal tafshel shel basar et akurisin eight. A tafshel shel basar, it didn't eat the meat itself. He only ate a meat dish. He only ate a potato from the chalint. Mutter lechel achal tafshel shel gvina. 
he's allowed to eat afterwards a tapshul shalvina, he's allowed to eat the pizza without the crust, without the cheese, takes off the cheese and eats the, the pizza. It's 100% milchigs, but he's allowed to eat it. Even though the Mechaber holds you have to wait six hours after meat, al pidin, you must wait six hours according to the Mechaber, because of these two reasons. But these two reasons, as mentioned, don't apply in the case of a tafsho. There's no meat stuck in your teeth, and there's no meishach tam, there's no lingering taste in your throat of the meat, or at least such a strong taste of the meat, which would require a six hour wait. So you don't, for sure, for sure you don't have to wait six hours. And more than that, and even washing your hands is not an absolute requirement. Washing your hands is a rishos. If you want, you could. I'm going to skip the Ramah for a moment. We'll soon see the Ramah has a whole different way of learning. But if you want to eat the cheese itself, if you want to eat the pizza with the cheese, or the other way around. You want to eat meat after a tafshal shalina. So it means, let's say you took off the cheese of the pizza, you only ate the, the crust with the sauce, and now you want to eat the, the, the meat itself. So then you also, then you have to wash your hands. It's not a rishos. Uh, clarifies shuman shalbasar dine kabasar atzmi. The fats of the meat is not called a tafshal shalbasar, it's the meat itself where there's a requirement to wait six hours. Okay. When it comes to soup, like uh, say chicken soup or something like that, water that was cooked with meat, so there's a machlekes rishonim, if that's called a tafshal shalbasar, which according to the Mechaber, you don't have to wait six hours, or that's maybe called basar itself. Why? Because over there it's a little bit different. When you eat a potato from the chala, and so the potato has its own, has its own taste, its own, its own metzias, really. And yeah, it's infused with meat flavor, it's flaciens, but one can say that the meishach tam is not so strong in such a case. You're eating, you're eating potato, it has meat flavor, but you're not gonna really, it's not gonna be left in your, in your throat such a strong aftertaste of meat. Masha hinking, if you're just eating if the meat was cooked in water and you're just eating that water, the water doesn't really have its own mm -hmm. taste to, to cover over so much the meat taste. The whole thing is the meat taste. So there you're actually going to be having the meishach tam of the meat. That's why some Rishonim say that's mamish like having, that's mamish like having the meat itself where there would be a, a requirement of waiting six hours. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. So that's interesting. I understand what the concept of what, is, what does this mean a tafshel shel basar, and why taka, you don't have to wait six hours after a tafshel shel basar. But then there's another, there's another interpretation of this sugya in the Gemara, this, of this din in the Gemara that we mentioned. The Rashbam has a little bit of a, the Rashbam has a very different actually, a different interpretation of what it means being tafshel a tafshel rishos, being tafshel a gmina chayva. And as Toys just points out, it appears to be a tremendous doichak, as we'll soon see. He says, what does it mean, mm -hmm. mean tafshel the tafshel the tafshel basar the tafshel basar. If you have a potato from the chalant, and then you have uh, some other tafshel shel basar, um, let's say you eat the dough of a meat kinish, right? So it's just two fleshige, two fleshige tafshilim, you don't eat actual meat, you eat the potato from the child, and now you want to eat the crust, the dough of a meat kinish, then tafshil basar, the tafshil basar, you don't have to wash your hands. So obviously the doichak is, as Toysfus himself points out, why would I think that you have to wash your hands and you have to tell me that it's a rishos, that you don't must? Why would I think you have to? Right? What's the chiddush in that? Obviously, you don't have to. So that's problem number one with this pirush. But him, that's how he interprets it. Bein tafshel a tafshel rishos. If you want to eat a potato from the chalun followed by the, the dough of a, of a meat kinish, bein tafshel basar a tafshel basar, then it's a rishos. Bein tafshel a gvina choiva. But if you eat cheese, and afterwards you want to eat a tafshel shel basar, you ate cheese. And now you want to eat the potato from the chalent. So then, mm -hmm. then you have to wash your hands. 
What about if you eat the potato from the chalent and then you want to eat the cheese? The Gemara wasn't discussing that. In that case, says the Rajbam, in that case, if you wait six hours after meat, you have to wait six hours after the potato from the chalat. Because when it said bin tafshil and it didn't mean between the tafshil, between the potato from the chalant, and afterwards you want to eat the cheese. Like Rabbeinu Tam's pirush. It meant that you ate the cheese first, and afterwards you want to eat the potato from the chalant. So according to him, it's, it's, the Gemara is telling us like this. If you eat a potato from the chalant, and you want to eat the crust of the meat by... Rishos, you don't must wash your hands. No chiddush. But it, and if you eat cheese, if you eat pizza, and then you want to eat a potato from the chalant, you're still required to wash your hands. The same way if you want to eat meat afterwards, you have to wash your hands. If you want to eat the potato from the chalant, you also have to wash your hands. But if you eat the potato from the chalant, and then you want to eat the pizza, meaning you eat the tafshul shabasar first, that the Gemara was not disgusting. What would be the din in such a case? then you would have a gzera that you have to wait six hours, just like after meat itself. But if you look in the Rishonim, the way this is presented, I'm going to read to you a little shtickle over here. Yeah. You know, okay, I'll, I'll read this a little bit later. So that's, that's the Rajman. But that's what the Ramah quotes the Halacha, as we'll soon see. Achshab we are machmir shaloi lechol gmina achar tafshul shal basar. And if you eat a potato from the shalom, you don't eat cheese afterwards, just like meat itself. So this that we wait six hours after meat, we would wait six hours after a potato from the chalant before eating pizza. And the marshal adds that the minig is that even, even if you take off the cheese from the pizza, you just want to eat the crust from the pizza, we still wait six hours. So between the potato from the chalant and even the crust of the pizza, we wait. And certainly between the potato from the chalant and the pizza itself, we wait six hours. You're not supposed to change from this minhag and be pirates gather and breach the, the fences of when there's a minhag, you don't, uh, you, you know, you have to follow the minhag. And the Ramah says something very, very schwer at first glance. He says, Miu, however, if there's no meat in the actual dish, it's not a potato from the chalant that was cooked with meat. Reaction is mashal bik rashal basar was cooked in a fleshiga pot. So potatoes that were cooked in a fleshiga pot. Mutter lechal achrav gvina, you're allowed to eat cheese afterwards. And there's no custom to wait the six hours. The minig is only after a potato from the chalant. But a potato cooked in a, meaning a potato cooked with meat. But a potato cooked in a fleshiga pot, there's no such minig, and you don't have to wait six hours. That's what the Ramah says over here. This whole thing comes from the Mardachai. I believe it comes from the Mardachai. I've seen the Lashen exactly. I'll, I'll read it to you in a moment. Um, it's quoted in Kofi and Gimel, the base series of Kofi and Gimel. It's about Mardachai Kosav. Mardachai writes, Risi Moiri Moirai Sha'asar Lechol Gvina Achar Beitzim Etuganim. You're not allowed to eat cheese after eggs that were fried in in in, in fats in in uh, in, fl- in meat in other words you don't have to uh, that, that, you're not, that you don't eat cheese after a tafshel shabasar gzeira atu basar machalov it's a gzeira mishum basar machalov this is the common custom. In the fritz gather, not to eat. And this, this part of the of the Mardachai is mamish quoted, but we just read in the Ramah that we don't eat cheese after a tafshal shabasar after potato from the chalant, and you're not supposed to change from the minak. Miui says im ein basar batafshal if there's no meat in the dish. Afal pishin is bashal bekderish and mamashlam mabasar even though it was cooked in a flesh of kapat. Noi no golahachmir. There's no minak to be machmir. A muter lechol achrav and you're allowed to eat. You're allowed to eat cheese directly after this. Frek de shach. What, uh, what is the Ramah? And really, it's a question on the Mardachai, right? What's, what, what, what's the Chiddush of this din? If you have potatoes cooked in a flesh of a pot, you have potatoes cooked in a flesh of a pot, you don't have to wait six hours. You can eat right away. You can eat flesh eggs, you can eat milk eggs right away. 
If you eat potato, potatoes cooked in a flesh of pot is what we call mat bar nat, something which we'll learn about later on in Simon Tzadik basically means parav, that when, when a par of a food receives taste from a flesh of gekeli, that par of a food, me'ikir me'ikir hadin, actually remains parav. And mm-hmm. even if you mix it with cheese, it's mutter. Sometimes you're lechadchila allowed to mix it with cheese, sometimes you're not allowed to lechadchila mix it with cheese. But it remains me'ikir hadin totally parav. And therefore, at least on a bidiyavid level, it remains parav. So therefore, even if it's mixed with the cheese, it's mutter. So of course you don't have to wait six hours after it to eat the cheese. So what's the chiddush over here of this din? So says the shach that the chiddush is that we're not talking about that it was cooked in a clean fleshiga pot. It was just potatoes cooked in a fleshiga pot, which as we mentioned before, that's called not barnat. That's a power of a food that receives taste from a fleshiga keli, remains power of, at least on a bit the avid level. What it means is it was cooked in a flesh sugar pot, but it wasn't cleaned out. There's still meat residue on it. So since there's still meat residue on the pot, the potatoes are receiving taste not from the keili, not from the flesh sugar dish, but from the actual meat residue. And therefore, it's really flesh sugar. And if it's mixed with cheese, it's treif. And, he's, and he's, therefore, he's telling you that even though it's really flesh sugar, it's just as fleshig as, as a potato from the chalent. And if these potatoes are warmed in a milchig pot, you have to cash the pot. And if it's mixed with milchig, you have to discard it, you have to throw it out because it's really fleshig. It receives fleshig a taste from the meat residue. But this minog, this gzeira that we mentioned before, that we wait six hours after the potato from the chalent, after the chalent, that does not apply to these potatoes that were cooked in this fleshig pot. So how are we to understand this? So the MS is that it, it is, it, there's a, the Ramah was very schwer, and the Shach tried to answer the Ramah, but the Shach seems to be schwer. The Mepharshim asked that the Shach is hard to understand. If there was meat residue on the pot, and therefore the potatoes become actually fleshigs from the meat. It's not not bar not, it's not fleshigs. It's not, it does not receiving a taste of the fleshig akeli, which really make a radin, the food would remain parath. It's receiving taste from the meat residue itself, which means it's actually fleshigs. So it's exactly the same thing as a potato from the chalent. The potato from the chalent received taste from the meat that was being cooked with. And this is receiving taste from the residue that's on the pot. What's the difference? Why over here there is a minig and over there there isn't? And be koyach this question, the arach roinim, that argue on the shach. The El Yaraba notably, it's a chash of a paisik, um, but it's, it's, in, it's an erachai and kufayin gimel over there. The El Yaraba quotes the shach and he argues and he says uh, there's no difference between such a case, if there's meat residue, then what's going to be the difference, right? Uh, then, then a regular tapshal shal basar where, where the potato was cooked with the meat in the chalant. In both cases, it's potato cooked with meat, it receives taste from the meat, becomes fleshigs. Either there is a minute to wait six hours or there isn't a minute to wait six hours. So he says, in such a case, you, you would have to wait six hours. There are laws talking about a clean pot. I, there's not really such a big chiddush. Okay, so he says the chiddush is that you could even uh, eat milchings right away afterwards, which is again, not really such a big chiddush. But because his question on the shach of what should be the difference between a regular tafshal shal basar, between a potato from the chalent, and this case, which is much the same thing, it's a potato receiving taste from me, because that question, he's choyduk on the shach and says you do have to wait six hours after those potatoes. What's the beer for the shach? So the beer for the shach is explained in the Sefer Yad Yehuda and Slachayr Adir Nachin. In the right, I should mention, and honestly, Yad Yehuda in his Maskana Lahalacha says we should be machmer for the Yerabah, but in his explanation of the shach, he explains like this, especially in, in light of the way we frame the whole sugya. It's quite clear that even after a real Tashal Shalbasar, a potato from the chalant. 
the, 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 the two reasons why we would have to wait six hours don't apply. We shouldn't have said it clear. Certainly there's no meat in your teeth. And even Moshech Tam is not really applicable because the main taste is the potato and it just has a flesh of a taste. But you're not gonna really have such a strong taste of meat in your throat if all you're eating is a potato. So the reasons don't apply. And that's why Rabbi Tam held that you don't have to wait six hours. Why does the Rosh Baham hold you to have to wait six hours? So the Mashmoas is like the Lush that we quoted over here from the Mordechai, B'Shem the Rav Yoh, that also lechol gvina afilo achar beitzim mitugonim b'shum and shalavas mishum gzeira. It's a gzeira mishum basar b'cholov. We quoted in two places, right? Over there he said gzeira, and over here he said the Lush in gzeira atu basar b'cholov. It's not real. It's a gzeira atu basar b'cholov. That, in, in other words, again, it's not clear what exactly this gzeira is, but it's something along the lines that, listen, a potato from the chalent, it's, it's a flesh dish. When you're eating, when you eat a potato from the chalent, they ask you, what are you eating? You're going to tell me chalent. You're not going to tell me a potato. They're going to tell me chalent. You're eating flesh In a person's mind, he's eating flesh And therefore, at least according to this shita, there was a need to make a gzeira mishum basar b'chalav. We don't make you, if we don't say you have to wait six hours after this case, there's going to be a lot of confusion about the whole din of waiting six hours after meat. People's minds, this is regular fleshiks. Masha Inkin, if a person eats, in the shach's case, he's eating just potatoes that were cooked in a fleshig And I ask you, what are you eating? You're going to answer me mashed potatoes. I, you didn't clean the pot, and there was meat residue in the pot, and therefore these potatoes are actually fleshics, because you don't even have 60 in the potatoes against the meat residue. So therefore, they're actually fleshics, and if you warm it up in a milk of the plate, they'll have to kasher it, and if you mix it with cheese, you have to throw it in the garbage. It's true. If that would happen, it would be taka garbage. But in the way, in, 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 if, if I ask you what you're eating, you're going to tell me I'm eating mashed potatoes. You're not going to tell me you're eating flesh, a flesh and condition. You're going to tell me you're eating mashed potatoes. Happens to be these mashed potatoes are flesh. But a person is, 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 is in, his, in his mind, he's eating mashed potatoes. And therefore, perhaps, there is no reason for this gzeir in this kind of a case to require someone to wait six hours. Again, if... If it gets mixed up with cheese, it's really flesh. It'll have to be thrown out. There's no question. But in terms of the gzeira of waiting six hours, which again, if you eat even a potato from the chalent, you don't really have to wait six hours. The two reasons don't apply. But there was a reason, at least according to one opinion, there was a reason to make a gzeira because it's confusing. People in, uh, in people's approach, it, it feels like you're eating flesh right? It's fleshigs. And therefore, if you don't require six hours after this, uh, there'll be a whole confusion in the whole din. Bashank and these mashed potatoes, they, they happen to be fleshigs. They're only incidentally fleshigs. And therefore, since they're only incidentally fleshigs, there's no need to make the gzeira to require you to wait six hours in such a case when the reasons to wait six hours don't even really apply. So the Fiza comes out of Yisoyed like this, as a possible explanation for the Shach, and that's the the Mashmos, if you look back and then we show him that that seems to be what they're trying to say. That when you eat a potato from the Cholent, it's true that none of the reasons apply to have to wait six hours. And that's where Rabbeinu Tam says you don't, and the Mechabra says you don't have to wait six hours. But the Rajbam says you do have to, and that's in the Ramah Pass, because you do have to wait six hours. Why? Gzeira, it's confusing. Why is it confusing? Because this is identified by everybody as a Fleshig dish. So if you don't require waiting six hours, in such a case, there'll be a lot of confusion. Masha inking those mashed potatoes that were cooked in a dirty Fleshig path, since people don't identify 
It's only incidentally fleshigs, but it's not in people's minds. It's not really fleshigs. So not re- so there we could follow the regular din that there's no reason to wait six hours. So therefore, since there's no reason to wait six hours, you don't have to wait six hours. We don't have to worry about this or that it's going to be confusing for other fleshig things because in people's minds, this isn't really even fleshigs that much. That's not what they're thinking of when they're... So it comes to the difference between something which is purposely fleshigs, like the potato from the chutland, versus something which is only incidentally fleshigs. And the fisa comes out that there's many more applications to this yesoid of the shaf. One application, we'll say, the, which is basically mamish the same exact case as the shaf, just, just a different, a different, uh, mamish like a little bit of a different type of a case, but it's the same rule, is let's say he always cooks vegetable soup and you ladle it out with a, a ladle, a fleshig a ladle, and the ladle has meat residue on it. So that bowl that you ladled out is mamish fleshigs, right? So that, that, that whole soup is a top shell shell of those potatoes, that vegetable soup, whatever it is that you, that's a top shell shell busser in, in a sense. If that's mixed with milchigs, it's strafe. Okay, however, would you have to wait six hours after eating that? According to Shach, he wouldn't. Because that's not a tafshel shalbasar. That's, that's not purposely a fleshing dish. And therefore, it's, in people's minds, they don't perceive it as a fleshing dish. It's incidentally fleshings. A fleshing, a potato from the chalant, they make a gzeira, you should wait six hours. See, because it's confusing. But in this case, there's no, there's no need for a gzeira. So you wouldn't have to wait six hours. You still have to be careful. If that mixes with cheese, it's strafe. But you, there wouldn't be this requirement of having to wait six hours. And maybe even a, a more common application of this would be the very, a very common question. Is it when a person goes to a Fleishiga restaurant, Fleishiga or a fast food place, he orders french fries, only french fries, or falafel or something like that. This is fried, this is deep fried in oil. Assuming that they use the same oil, that they fry the chicken nuggets, then they fry afterwards, or even at the same time, in the other, in the other fire, they fry these french fries. So these french fries are 100% Fleishigs, not even a shy looking. If they're by mistake mixed with cheese, if you warm them up in a the milchiger microwave, you have to kosher it. They're 100% fleshigs, no question, right? But the question is, do they have this chumrah that the Ramah is talking about, like the Ramah, do they have a din of a tafshal shalbasar that we should also wait six hours? Again, even if they are a tafshal shalbasar, according to the Machaber, you don't have to wait six hours. According to the Ramah, there's a minug, and he says, ain't lifrit together, you shouldn't uh, be pirates together. But the, we're machmer to wait six hours also. But on the other hand, there are more clearly paskin that if we're just potatoes cooked in a fleshing pot, so then we don't have the minute to wait six hours. So according to the Shach's understanding, so according to the, the El Yoraba, that hector only applies if it's just potatoes cooked in a fleshing pot. But if it's cooked together with chicken nuggets, right, or even in the fleshing oil, then it's the same as a tafshal shalbasar. You have to wait six hours, according to the Ramah, just like the potato from the chalant. But according to the shach, it's different than the potato from the chalant. The potato from the chalant, if I ask you what you're eating, you're going to tell me This is a fleshing dish. So therefore, there was a gzeira to wait six hours also. It's confusing. And if I ask you what you're eating, you're going to tell me french fries. So it's not, it happens to be, these french fries incidentally are fleshings because they were made in the same oil. Because why should they have a separate thing of oil? But it's not, it's not the kavana, it's not perceived as a fleshig dish. And therefore, according to the shach, you won't have to wait six hours after it. Okay, so what do you do, halacha lamaisa? So everyone could just follow your own law. We were just saying over the sugya. Um, I want to just add one little twist. And that is that even if, if we are to follow the shach, and in my humble opinion, I would believe that there is plenty of room to follow the lenient opinion in such kind of a case. We're talking a uh, chumrah, there are a chumrah, a chumrah, a chumrah, on many different levels. And the shach is the shach, right? Um, nevertheless, I would suggest personally to wait one hour minimum. Because the one hour comes from the zayar. 
So this that what we were talking about, about the waiting the six hours, that is all Medina de Gomara. The Gemara had a requirement of waiting six hours according to some Rishayin. Then there was the two reasons. Then uh, by a tafshil, the two reasons don't apply. And then we had a question, is there a Xera in such a kind of a case? So we want to be lenient and say there's no Xera in such a kind of a case. We have a right to follow the Shach. But when the Zoyar says to wait one hour between high Mifla, who exactly knows exactly what's the high Mifla? So maybe like the Zoyar, we're still supposed to wait an hour even after it not just a regular Tav Shel or anything actually Fleshik. So we don't know that. We could only do what we're told. If the police can bring the Zayar and they say, I'll pee the Zayar, kach kach, that's what we do. So because this is not so clear what the Zayar would have to say on this issue, so I would say at a minimum, one should wait an hour. And if you wait an hour, you're kind of covered also from a halachic end, because even if... Even if the shach is, uh, or this pirush and the shach is not correct, at least you wait in an hour, which is the base requirement that the Ramah requires you to wait even after meat itself. So therefore, I would feel like you're more than safe if you wait an hour um, after these french fries. But everyone should do whatever their minog was and whatever, they, uh, whatever their rub says.